they wouldn't correct someone saying tomato, but they would correct me saying tomato. And that was a part of that sort of inherent anti-blackness that was woven into a, an ironically majority black community. Gullah is a language that it's maintained more of its Africanness than any other dialect or language in the United States. It was brought over to the United States by enslaved people from Western Africa, primarily Sierra Leone and Ghana. Little do you know you are already speaking some of the Gullah languages like tote, like to carry something. Tote is a word that we brought over. It's an African word, um, you know, for carry. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya is a Gullah phrase for come by here. So goes the, the history of African Americans creating much of the language that makes English cool here when we come up with pop slang, you know, pop culture slang or hip hop slang or things like that. And those words then go on to be regular words. Um, like say for instance, the word bling for jewelry. Every time I buy new guy, bling, bling. business situations or in interview situations, um, I would be more likely to speak with you this way in quote speaking, than for me to crack my teeth like this out when I talk to all of my people now. And which I just said is, than for me to speak this way when I'm speaking to my own people. A part of my teaching Gullah at Harvard, it involves normalization. When you do speak it, it's not associated with a lack of intelligence. It's not referred to as broken English. It's no different than if you are doing a job interview with someone who walks in and they have a British accent. Ooh, that riding, John the Revelator. 